Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Tuesday broadcast. Um, just a couple of quick announcements. Tonight at 9 o'clock p.m. Eastern, I'm doing a call on chemicals and cancer. I'm going to answer a lot of questions I think people have about herbicides and pesticides and plastic bottles and microwaves and all kinds of things like that that um, may or may not have a relationship to cancer. We'll have a real thorough discussion of that and an opportunity to ask questions. And then I have some really fabulous things to show you. I'm going to do some shameless self-promotion here. Wellness Farm has some new products, low-fat kale chips. Now, I don't know if you've been reading the labels on the kale chips that um, are available in the store, but they have as much fat, a lot of them, as potato chips. So uh, look health-promoting, but they really aren't so much. And so these do not have added oil or fat of any kind, and um, don't they look lovely? I've tasted them. They're fabulous. They even taste better than the ones with fat. And you might notice that the volume is bigger, too, because because uh, when you take the oil out, when you don't add oil, I should say, to the kale chips, um, they end up having less weight, so you put more chips in the package. So that's all good. We also have instant fat-free hummus mix. It comes in regular and black bean flavor that has sort of a southwestern kick to it. And the idea here is fat-free hummus is hard to find in some areas. For example, where my summer home is, there is no fat-free hummus in the entire county. I've looked. So you just add boiling water to this. It travels well, obviously, and you can make as much as you like. You can make an individual serving or you can make up the whole thing if you're having a party. And then two new food bars I want to show you. One is chocolate fruit crunch. The other is fruit crunch. For those of you who like our crunch bars but are looking for something lower in fat, these are fabulous because they don't contain nuts. So um, I've been, I've sampled both. They're fabulous. I've sampled the hummus. It's fabulous. So recommend those things highly. You can get this by calling our office. And then one last announcement is I mentioned last week that school starts in another few weeks and you can take just one class, for example. Um, Anya Todd, our, one of our great dietitians, is teaching a class on sports nutrition with a plant-based emphasis. So anyway, if you need information about that, let us know too. So I want to talk, um, uh, when I answer a question from a viewer, first of all, who uh, emailed me in response to one of last week's broadcasts talking about um, can you really make a difference in politics? As you know, we had a couple of discussions about the political issues around health and diet and medicine and, and that sort of thing. And um, I think the answer is yes, um, eventually. I think the key is we have to get more people involved in the process. But uh, I think we have to participate in the politics. I mean, if we just let these legislators do whatever they want. We've seen how that's working out for us, right? So I think we have to get involved. We have to write letters. We have to talk to our elected officials and, and uh, test in testify in front of committees. And, and I do that because I think it's important to be involved in the process. But I really do believe that the best uh, options are to do grassroots educating because you can really shift buying behavior. And that's what's going to change things faster than anything. And I've seen this just with the offerings in health food stores and that sort of thing around, uh, and, and regular grocery stores around Columbus. You know, when I started in this business about 16 years ago, there was one health food store and it was about the size of my bedroom closet. And today, there are two Whole Foods located here. We have a local independent health food store that's in a, it's a full size grocery store. We have a couple of co-ops and one of them does close to $3 million a year in business. And every grocery store carries organic produce and and um, lots of health promoting foods fat free dressings and spaghetti sauces and things of that nature so and we have two Trader Joe's so that demand that we've created we helped create it but certainly it came from other places too has uh, caused the the grocery business locally to respond by offering more products that we like so I really think the key to the whole uh, changing the whole system thing really is in grassroots which is why I put out these broadcasts which I do hope you forward on to other people because the more people know about this, the more can get involved in, um, in helping us to shift our buying power, which will change the system. So you can read more about that in my book, Solving America's Healthcare Crisis. I'm a firm believer in grassroots efforts, and, and I think to the extent that we're noticing some change, that's where it's coming from mostly. But we'll continue to be involved in the political process and have the discussions about what's going on, and uh, maybe we all should just pester our elected officials a little bit more with the things that we think are important. 
So I have some news to report. You know, I'm always looking for good sources of information. And of course, the problem is finding independent sources of information. There's no shortage of information. If you've been to the internet lately, my gosh, it's the best and worst of everything out there. And there's no shortage of it, of information. But the key is finding reliable information. And I'm really favorable to the Cochrane Collaboration. I've spoken about them for years. This is a very, uh, the most independent research organization in the world. And they do a great job of analyzing studies and reporting on topics ranging from flu vaccines to mammography. I've been talking about the mammography issue a whole lot lately. But um, I found another uh, resource online. Um, and uh, it's called The Number Needed to Treat. And the website is T-H-E-N-N-T dot com, N-T-T dot com, something like that. Anyway, you can get the website from the article, which will be posted in the Health Race Online Library. But this is a group of doctors who analyzed drugs and classes of drugs to uh, look at their efficacy and safety and determine how many people benefit from taking them and how many people are hurt by taking them. And um, they had some data on statin drugs that I thought was interesting and one of the reasons I'm talking about heart disease with today's broadcast is it's still the number one killer of Americans so to the extent that it affects so many people I think we have to continue the discussion about it. So I looked at their analysis of um, statin drugs and, and after five years of follow-up here is what this group had to say about statin drugs and by the way the list of studies that they analyzed is very very long you can go to the website um, and by the way it is uh, T-H-E-N-N-T.com that is the website. But uh, after analyzing this very, very long list of studies, here's what they figured out. 98% of the people who took statin drugs to lower their cholesterol did not benefit at all. No deaths were, uh, were prevented. 1.6% of the people who took statin drugs were able to avoid a heart attack. 0.4% avoided a stroke. 1.5% developed diabetes, and 10% developed muscle damage. And so if you do a quick crunch of those numbers, what you come up with is that more people were hurt by statin drugs than helped by statin drugs. And I should have said this earlier, the first part of this analysis was done on people who did not have any history of a cardiovascular event. So they then crunched the numbers for people who had had a cardiovascular event. And here's what it looked like. Uh, for people who had a cardiovascular event after five years of taking statin drugs, 96% of those people saw no benefit. A little bit better than the uh, people who didn't have a history of cardiovascular disease, but not a whole lot. 1.2% uh, were saved from dying. 2.6% were able to avoid a heart attack. 0.8% were avoid, able to avoid a stroke. 0.6% developed diabetes and 10% were harmed by muscle damage. And once again, the score is more people harmed than helped by statin drugs. So what is the take home point from this? Well, first of all, this website is a wonderful resource and I will be referring to them more uh, because they have some excellent data on uh, the use of drugs. But I think the other thing is if the more people know about this, the more inclined they're going to be to choose to change their diet instead of taking drugs. Because I think the reason most people take the drugs is because they think that they're being helped a lot more than they're actually being helped by taking them. So if we can just make everybody aware that they can improve their health, they can prevent, stop, and reverse coronary artery disease by using diet much more effectively than by using drugs where our country is going to be better off. And individual lives will actually be saved and families will benefit and the cost of treatment goes down and on and on and on. So along that line, while we're on the topic of heart disease, last year the Department of Health and Human Services, the Centers for Disease Control, and the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services announced a new public campaign called the Million Hearts Initiative. And there were all kinds of other organizations who joined in immediately as soon as this was started, like the American Heart Association, the American College of Cardiology, and of course Walgreens, because we really need to have the drug companies and drug sellers involved in this too. And the stated goal is to prevent a million heart attacks or strokes during the coming five years. And that is a noble goal. And as I said before, since the since heart disease is still the number one killer of Americans, it's certainly something we should be paying attention to. But here is the problem. 
the recommendations are the ones that we've been trying for years to, to do something with in this country that have been proven to be ineffective. So for example, let's look at the dietary recommendations. They're virtually useless. Of course they say eat more fruits and vegetables. I don't think anybody's not saying that anymore. But also lower your consumption of salt and saturated fat and trans fats and cholesterol. Um, I went to dozens of websites uh, that were involved in this whole project somehow and I couldn't find a single one that really gave uh, dietary recommendations that had the potential to prevent, stop, or reverse heart disease. And of course the drug companies have their say in it. The, the uh, websites really talk about taking aspirin as being a good idea and making sure people stay compliant on their medications for blood pressure and cholesterol. And of course, after what I just told you about statin drugs, I think you can see what I'm talking about, that this is the same old advice that we know is ineffective, but we just, it's almost like the thought process is if we can get enough organizations behind it and throw enough money at these initiatives, maybe they'll be effective even though they never have been before. So um, I have a little bit better idea. Instead of the Million Hearts Initiative, why don't we have the 300 Million Americans Initiative? Because the diet that we teach here at the Wellness Forum has been shown to prevent, stop, and reverse heart disease, but also to prevent, stop, and reverse most of the degenerative diseases that most of our healthcare dollars are being spent on and are compromising the quality of life for most people in this country. So I'd be a little bit more in favor, a whole lot more in favor of the 300 million Americans initiative. Let's save everybody's life. It's the same diet. It's easy to teach. It's easy to adopt and you feel great and your whole life changes for the better and you get off your meds and boy isn't that a better outcome than just the same old same old and ending up in the same old spot. So um, that's all for today. As always, please feel free to contact our office or send me an email if you have comments or questions or are interested in any of the things we talked about. And uh, of course, pass this on to other people who are interested in this type of information. Have a great day.